What's up guys, it's your Motivational Gamer and welcome to your ultimate fodder guide. Shouts out to Marissa who left a comment on the YouTube page saying, Hi TMG, I was hoping you could maybe do a vid about food. You know, not like hamburgers or nothing. <laughs> but you know, for evolving units. I just added the hamburgers part in there, don't yell at me. How do you decide who's food and who's not and maybe how to get it? I've been farming the guild shop for rainbow mons, and, but I don't have the four star fodder to evolve them. Any tips on how to make evolutions earlier? Thank you. All right, so with that, we're just going to give you guys a, a, you're basically your ultimate guide to fodder. Getting fodder, obtaining fodder, what different ways you can get fodder, and how to skill up your monsters, get fodder for your monsters, level up, skill up, you know, all that jazz all in one video, guys. So without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and dive in. As you guys know, when you guys start the game, it's pretty tough. You know, you're thrown into the scenario with a relatively short guide, and they're just like, here you go. Check the drop info, you like such and such falls, you guys have a basic idea of how to use basic monsters to feed and all that other jazz. Now, what happens is, you'll go through the game and you'll want to start to grade up your monsters. Now, before we dive in, I want to tell you guys the easiest way to power up your monsters quickly and efficiently is to focus on one team at a time. I talk about this in a lot of my other videos about focus, 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 um, and the reason why is because it's a lot easier to build one team in this game specifically um, than it is to build multiple multiple teams uh, players have a tendency to come into the game and they see units all over the place or, or worst case scenario you have a lot of great luck and you end up pulling a lot of units that you weren't necessarily prepared for especially with the slew of events that are being thrown at you on a regular basis and a ton of mystical scrolls that typically are all over the place in the form of events giveaways or if you actually are lucky enough to find them in character dungeon um, so of course the simplest way of course to get fodder is to go through the scenario right so as you go through scenario you get these little guys called rainbow mon uh, which are you know your basic form of fodder uh, two stars drop in the scenarios and then as you eventually progress through uh, excuse me element dungeons b7 or above or dungeon dungeons like giants dragons necro b8 and above then you'll start to get three star max Rain rainbow mon as you can see currently the only way to get four star Rainbow Mon are either through TOA, okay, certain uh, a certain floor reward for TOA uh, through Guild Battle, um, and then sometimes uh, they might do events to give you guys that. Oh, and also on your first initial six stars that you make, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you get a four star Rainbow Mon when you make your first six star of each element. I can't remember what day of the uh, what. Because, you know, there's five days, I think, of rewards. I can't remember what day the reward comes on, but that's definitely uh, another way that you guys can get them. So, again, Rainbow Mon being one of the easier ways to obtain fodder, um, and that's just one of the ways. Now, again, back to focus, guys. So when we talk about focus and really, you know, honing in on a team, as you guys go through the game, obviously your, your first initial goal, your conquest, is going to be to get through the scenario. What I recommend is when you guys are grabbing your fodder, um, especially like your rainbow mon, just put them aside or put them in storage. Or uh, a trick that I like to do is I like to utilize my unknown scrolls um, for some is to get two star fodder so I can evolve my three stars. Ideally, what I like to, to say, because I haven't talked about a fodder or getting fodder in such a long time, but what I, what I like to think of is I like to make as many four stars as I can. And essentially the trick to making um, as many four stars as you can is leveling units that you don't you know you're just not going to need well how do you know and this this you know this goes along the lines more so to Marissa's question how do you know which monsters to feed and which ones not to feed well as a general rule I like to keep all light and dark monsters so I'll show you guys my storage here so you guys can see what I do I like to keep all LNDs, so every LND I summon, I put in storage. Uh, duplicates, usually I put in there too, mainly because, you know, I'm still debating if I'm going to feed it for skill ups or whatever. So all my LNDs go, you know, every month or whenever I do TOA, they go in there unless I, I have an initial use for them. So as you guys can see, they're all down there. And then my other rule is typically units that sometimes I'll keep three stars that I want to build, like the Fire uh, Harg here. Um, but mostly it's rare units, okay? And what I mean by rare units are four star units and I typically only keep one of each type unless unless I know that I might build it later or I might need skill ups, then I'll put it in then I'll put all of the duplicates in storage um, just in case I'm unsure as you know, for example, you guys see I have two fire samurais and I have a crap ton of liches because 
Lich just gets stitches. <laughs> but no, uh, knowing that I might end up building a Lich later, I've kept all of the duplicates that I've summoned and put them in there. If you guys are wondering why the Fire Minotaur is in there, it's because they updated his skill kit, and I really want to play with him because I think that he'll be really, really annoying uh, for people to deal with. And as you guys can see, it just follows a consistent pattern all the way up. And then, of course, units that I might want to build are just there and so on and so forth. But that's how you tell. Now, if it doesn't fall inside this criteria, criteria so if they're not nat fives, if they're not uh, one of each natural four, or basically it's not a unit that's hard to get like L and Ds, it's safe to feed. Now, my, my, again, my general rule is if I can get the monster again easily, typically being any kind of three star of fire, water, wind, if it's easy to get, it's easy to feed. Meaning that if it's not a priority build for me, then I can easily feed it. And that way, you don't have to put your storage at 500 monsters and save everything that you could possibly think of and not know what to do with your storage. I've seen storages that are just insane, guys, with hundreds and hundreds of three stars because players are like, I don't even know. I might build this, I might build that, blah, 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 blah. But an easy way to do it is if if it doesn't fall into your core team, meaning if you're if you're still in scenario, you just started the game and you're not and you're basically and you're getting ready to go into Giants, if it doesn't fall into your Giants team and it's not a four star that you're not sure if you can use, or if it's not a five star, if it's not an L and D, get rid of it. <laughs> or sorry, if it's not skill up fodder, meaning if it's not a skill up for whatever, then get rid of it. It's, it's really that simple because chances are, guys, in the length of time that you're going to be playing, you, you'll probably get it again. Promise. <laughs> Unless it's a Marshall Cat. Okay. Oh, and that brings me to another point, guys. If it's any fusion fodder, and, and I and I, I fail because I should have mentioned this as well. Fusion fodder, make sure you guys keep two. So like your two stars, three stars. If it has like the little circle on it, um, let me see if I have an example in my, in my, my inventory here. Um, I should, I, I think, I don't know if it shows up in here, but if it has a little circle for the fusion indicator, make sure you guys are saving that too from the very beginning because that helps you a lot. Um, but that's my general criteria for what I should save and what I shouldn't save. Now these one, okay, I don't know what the hell he's doing in there, but <laughs> but my other, you know, the, and the little dark monsters I kept because that's from the Halloween event. But that's generally it, you know, when it terms to when it comes to de determining who to feed, when to feed, how to feed, right? And and that's it. Again, guys, never, ever, ever feed a nat 4. Why? Because, well, not ever, but never feed a nat 4 that you're not sure about or you're just in a rush to make a 6-star. Why? Because um, Com is always in a constant state of flux and they're always changing the way units operate. So you don't want to get caught in a situation where you had the nat 4 that you just fed just because, well, you just needed it to make a, a quick 5-star to make a 6-star. Um, only to find out that they update and rebalance and then that unit that you fed now all of a sudden you can never get again and is now OP as shit, okay? That, that is OP overpowered, overpowered as shit. <laughs> overpowered as shit, okay? Um, and then you're just kicking yourself in the butt because you're like, oh my god, I can't believe I did that. Oh my god, what do I do? Oh my god, right? That's not a situation that you want to be in. So, again, guys, that's just the general criteria. Now, in terms of acquiring fodder, so now acquiring fodder, uh, I talked a little bit about where you can get fodder. And I mentioned the simplest way, guys, to effectively make a team, of course, is to focus on one team at a time. So if you're in Giants, focus on Giants, pretend nothing else exists. If you're in Dragons, focus on Dragons, pretend nothing else exists. Um, and then as you collect or you know accrue monsters and make six stars um, and get better runes, then you can kind of have a little bit more flexibility. Now, accumulating fodder is quite a bit different. There, there are a number of ways that you guys can attain and achieve and get all the fodder you want. And I'll talk about my personal preferences, but I'll offer, offer also offer you guys multiple ways to get it, okay? Now, again, I mentioned the easiest way to get fodder is going to be to, you know, go through Rainbow Mon, collect your Rainbow Mon, etc. You can also get it through scenarios, through farming specific stages. Um, if you guys are wondering how to get, like, Inugami fodder when you guys are trying to get skill ups for your Inugami, Inugami, excuse me, I recommend Garen Forest. Why? Because it only has one three star. I typically personally do um, the boss, the hell boss. Um, just because, you know, personal preference, and I've seen to have the most success there. You guys can check that out. But from my personal experience, what I've found is that boss monster or boss stages have been a lot nicer to me with three stars than any other stage, okay? So that's typically where I farm if you guys are looking specifically for skill fodder. Also, make sure you guys keep in mind or check, um, I think there's, I can't remember the website. It might be listed on the wiki, but I'm not for sure. Um, but 
check the secret dungeons. Google a hey, summoners wear secret dungeons. Find out where the secret dungeons are because secret dungeons are also another way to get fodder. Although inefficient, um, secret dungeons, if uh, excuse me, they're inefficient if you're not strong enough to clear all the way to stage 10 in a relatively fast amount of time. However, if you can clear secret dungeons, that is another optimal way to get fodder for specific units if you need skill ups. I don't recommend farming uh, secret dungeons if you need just regular fodder, just because you could be spending time doing something else like farming Karos, uh, this place right here, getting Rainbow Mon and other stuff that can help improve your game also while still getting fodder. Does that make sense? Uh, typically I don't recommend doing anything in this game that's not going to benefit you in more than one way at a time. So that way you can knock out multiple things as you progress through the game. Okay. So um, scenarios again like I said guys is, is one way especially if you guys need specific fodder you can just pick a stage again. I recommend the boss stage. It just seems to be the most consistent um, that I found in, in you know the time that I've been playing. Um, and again that's just you know uh, another way like I said if you guys are farming scenarios for fodder make sure you guys are using double XP and leveling something like leveling up your fusion fodder or whatever um, so that way uh, like I said you guys are winning in more than one way now the most my favorite way I won't say the most efficient but my favorite way to farm fodder especially if you guys are trying to get fodder uh, to make six stars is to just do Karos guys Karos drops Rainbow Mon, like I said, all the way up, and then once it once B8 drops, or excuse me, once you get into B8 and Giants, Dragons, and Necro, uh, three star Rainbow Mon start dropping, and then um, in the element dungeons like Hall of Fire, Hall of Dark, whatever, B7 and above, three star max Rainbow Angel Mon start dropping. And uh, the reason why I say Karos is one of my favorite is because you're still getting runes, you're still getting, you know, you still have your chance to get mystical scrolls, and you're also getting Rainbow Mon drops. So since you're going to be farming here for an inordinate amount of time anyway, uh, you might as well get your fodder here too as well. Again, the biggest fallback, you know, from that, I'll, mention, I'll talk about raids here in just a second too because that's an excellent place to get uh, fodder for six stars. Um, but the problem again I'm you know I'm falling back on the lack of focus guys you know for people what's well, not really a lack of focus I, I would say it's too much focus of too much focus on a lot of different teams and that's what really slows the progress of players down when trying to make six stars or evolve units so let's say you know just imagine if you came to the game and you had let's say you had my roster right now you had everything that I have in my unit in my box and you had everything that I have in my storage and everything is now level one um, and you're like okay shit what do I do right how do you effectively build everything that you need to build out of this box all at one time right it's overwhelm but the problem is is as players start you guys get your basic team and Khan basically provides you everything provides us everything that we need to succeed but then we start pulling all these units and then we start asking questions right well like general chat hey um, how, how do we do this how do I build this what do I do next what do I do this and they're like do this do this do this the next thing you know you got 57 units that you're trying to build and get runes for uh, when all you really need to do is just build one team at a time and what do I mean by one team at a time five units one team at a time. The only time you're really swapping a unit out is essentially if you pull a four star or a five star that you're able to put in that replaces that unit effectively. And that's the biggest thing, guys. The easiest way to speed up your six star progression is to focus on one team at a time. Um, and and I, I cannot stress that enough, guys. If you guys want to make six stars fast, it's like when I'm doing the TOA two star challenge, people are like amazed that in a, you know, in a couple of weeks, I'm like already at five, five stars and it's just happening and I'm all I'm doing is playing on stream guys and it's it's just when you're focused on a limited amount of units it's easy to fodder and and, and skill stuff up and do what you got to do because it allows you to do the things that you need efficiently without being distracted guys and honestly like that is the biggest piece of advice I can give you um, in making six stars really really fast or getting the fodder that you need so um, if I was to summon this up this is kind of a longer video but about to sum everything that I've basically talked about here in about 30 seconds to a minute. The easiest way, guys, to get fodder is this. Um, focus on a team, okay, wherever you're at, whether Giants, Dragons, Necro, whatever. Um, also, make sure that after you have your team picked, you lock away um, your fusion fodder. You're going to make sure you duplicate four stars or if it's, uh, excuse me, not your duplicate four stars, but your unique four stars. So if it's just one of each type, you're going to put that in storage unless you have the intention of building it, meaning... 
Uh, intention of building it, meaning it's it's going in a composition that you're working on currently, whether giants, dragons, whatever, okay? You're going to store those. All of your light and dark monsters are also going to go in storage unless you have intent to use them immediately, like Bella, the lightning Nugami, okay? And then that's pretty much it. If it doesn't fit in that criteria, basically if it's a three star or below, that's super easy to get. Well, not super easy to get, but they're pretty common. It's okay to feed them, and then you can make start making fodder as soon as possible. Again, the goal of the game is to make as many four stars as you can, so that way you can just make five stars. When you're making the four stars, make sure they're undesirable monsters, meaning three stars that you can get commonly, two stars that you can get commonly. Um, units that you have no intention of, intentions of using. Um, I like to start with two star max rainbow mon, or I like to start with three stars or above. I don't prefer doing two star leveling two stars or one stars at all, because who the hell has time for that? I personally don't. I'll just feed fodder to them that I get out of unknown scrolls to make them three stars, and then we'll just go from there, right? So that's typically what I do for that. Um, and then from there, guys, again, the biggest thing, guys, is to choose where you want to get your fodder. If you need skill ups, do care, do uh, scenario or do secret dungeons or if you're just in it for rainbow mon because you need to make as many six stars as you can then Karos is the best way because um, it allows you to win in more ways than one um, also guys before we bring this video to a close I wanted to take a little bit of time and address rating uh, because rating is one of the best ways to get three star rainbow mon um, because it sh they just drop all the time. So if you guys are fortunate enough to have gotten into rating R1, R2, R3, R10, R57, 25, 36, dash 1, um, they drop 3 star Rainbow Mon quite consistently in there and that's another great way to get fodder. I did not include talking about TOA uh, Rainbow Mon because, I mean, come on. I mean, that's once a month <laughs> or twice a month if you guys are also doing TOA hard. Um, so I left that out of the video. However, everything else that you guys need to know uh, to get the fodder and the amount of fodder that you guys will need to be effective in this game, I've talked about in this video, guys. So um, make sure you guys just follow along. If you guys got any um, questions at all about, you know, how to feed, what to feed, how to get more fodder, etc. in your own unique individual situation, uh, definitely drop me a comment in the box below, guys. And I just drooled all over myself. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be happy to assist. Uh, so with that being said, guys, thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, this is your Motivational Gamer, and we will see you guys next time. Peace.